notes. And um, what I'm going to do with you is a few parts of this class, guys, as you know, you have three classes with me. One is theory, we go through the electrical wiring uh, commercial. One is calc and lighting. So we're gonna, I'm going to be hitting you with a couple of, this is the last presentation about calc and the load calculation. Next week, we will do transformer calculation. And then a week after, we hit uh, the lighting. We start doing lighting. So this will be the last presentation about load calculation in terms of uh, different par different uh, locations like commercial building and welders like we did yesterday. I picked a few places for you, mobile and manufactured homes, park. So everybody has the handouts, right, in front of you? Okay, so here's what, I, uh, here's what this is. And could you please go to um, if this, the article that talks about this is 550. So five, five, zero. This is the article that talks about, um, about mobile slash manufactured homes park. So in these location, guys, they have a park. You look at this one. Um, here's what's given. What's given is a 50 lots where a manufactured slash mobile home can park, pull in, um, permanently get sit there and get wired. And your job, Joe, my friend, is to wire the, the power distribution system for these 50 lots. Could that happen in real life? All the time, right? So does everybody understand what the situation is? I have 50 lots, and the voltage system is 2.120 single phase. They're, they're dwellings, right? They're manufactured home dwellings. Uh, they're single phase. Yeah, does it, does it look even like a single phase? Now it's almost single phase. They're single phase. So I have uh, 50 lots, voltage is 2.120 single phase, and I need to find the size equipment, size service equipment for the whole 50 lots. Everybody understand that one? So we're going to put the whole 50 lots. We have to have a distribution system that feed a disconnect. Typically, guys, they have a, they have a disconnect with a meter for each one of these manufactured homes uh, within sight of manufactured homes, and you feed them with 60 to 100 amp um, feed, either plugged in or hardwired, right? So we're not interested in, the, in how to feed the actual manufactured homes. We're interested in the distribution system. Okay, so right in here, right in this part of the lot, I have my main distribution panel, and I'm bringing the power into it. That's what I'm interested. Main distribution panel, bringing the, the, power, the power into it, and going and feeding each and every one of these lots. Each and every one of these lots. I don't know, I don't want to make it too complicated here, but you can get the point, right? You're coming from this, and you're feeding all these here and here, and then you keep going for each one of these lots, um, and all the way. I made it complicated, didn't I? Okay. Does everybody understand? They're coming from the distribution panel, feeding all these uh, these lots, 50 of them. Any question about what the given is? So what's your job and mine is to come to the main distribution panel, size it, size the feeder that comes to it. Cool. Yeah. Any question guys before before we go ahead about the what's given? That's your fifty. Um, okay, so fifty lots. Everybody understand? Fifty manufactured homes you can stick in there. So okay. What's my job? My job is this is my main distribution panel, the one that main distribution panel, the one that we were just talking about. Like we have done before, Brian, my friend, we need to size the bus, the actual panel, the over temperature device, the service that's coming into that panel, the main bonding jumper, and the grounding electrical conductor. This is typical for every building that you guys are going to enter. Did you get the rhythm of how, what we do? If you guys get this picture, I'm going to repeat this one a trillion times as we move on to the industrial project. That's it. You get into a building and we size these things. Right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. If I, if you can get all these five things about a panel, would you be able to go install it, guys? Put it together, yeah. Size it, estimate it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so, so the first thing we need to do, and um, we have from Article um, 5, if you guys go to 550.31, if you guys go to 550.51, I'm going to go sla make a, a snapshot of that boy, just because we have not been there, and just because Brian is my friend. Okay, and 550, if you guys go to 550, uh five 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 zero okay okay five five zero and five five zero three one right is twelve five five zero there's a few things here guys I'm not gonna get into the details of the code requirement for it I want to go into the load calculation five five three three one here you go right in here okay here's what I would like you to highlight right in this location please highlight the allowable demand factor for park electrical wiring. Park electrical wiring. Here's what you're going to do. I, I want to remind you that this is for one voltage, though. Um, so here's the here's the voltage that we're talking about. Uh, shall be calculated at 122.40 volts on the lar uh, larger of the following: 16 volt, 16 kVA for each mobile hole. Or the load calculation and according with 550.18 for the largest typical mobile home that each lot will, will, will accept. So two ways. You can either go to calculation based on the mobile home itself. It's like a residential house, 3 volt, uh, three volt amp per square foot. We have no idea how big is that is, right? Or you can um, uh, allocate a 16K for every lot. And typically, because we don't know what the, how big the manufacturer the the, uh, the manufactured homes are, so we typically we use the that value. Cool. Typically, we use that value. Does everybody understand where we got this value from? 16k. So every lot is going to be allocated 16 kV kVA. By the way, Adam, my friend, your house and I and my house are allocated by Excel Energy when they do the calculation. Well, they give us 10k. 10 kVA or 10 kW. So 16 kW is not something to sneeze on for a manufactured home or mobile home. So on, on average, a house, a typical house, a demand is 10 K. So that's nothing to sneeze on. Okay, now because, now remember we are, so 16, everybody knows where the 16 came from, cool. Then if you put multiple of them on a service or a feeder, exactly what we did, we have 50 of them on a service or a feeder, 50, you can derate them. So I have, how many do I have? I have 50, so I'm right in here, everybody can see where I am, right here, 50. What's my derating factor? I want to remind you, this is a demand factor, demand factor of 23%, uh, 23%. What does that mean? Means these 50s, you multiply 50 times 16K, and then you multiply, cut it down by 23%. Why would they cut it down by 23%? Because they're 50. If they were other than 50, can you guys see how to use this demand factor? For example, if, we, if there's only five of them, what's your demand factor? Well, yeah, 33, yeah, 39. 33. No, 39. <laughs> I'm off by one. So you got the you got the hang of it, right? How to use this table exactly like any other directed table. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We we understand where the information is coming from. So let me just grab a snapshot so we don't forget it. Um, on that boy here. Okay, so then we we move into our topic so that's uh that's at least we know where it came from right okay so now let's go so here's where it came from um now i'm going to go back and uh okay where, where am i going too fast there you go so i'm going to go back and do my calculation so uh let's use what color chair let's use red so i have 16 k v and a everybody knows where the 16 k v a came to be right how many units do I have? 50 units. Everybody knows where the 50 came to be? Because I have 50 lots. Cool. 
So 15, so if you multiply 16k by 50, you end up with 800kvma. KVA. Anybody disagree with Chad? Anybody disagree? Right? This the simple math. 50 of them multiplied by 16 kVA. Where the 16 kVA from the code? We just looked at that. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. Then, um, then what you need to do, my friends, is for 50 lots, that the rating factor from table 550.31, right? Uh, for 50 lots, what's the rating factor? It's 23%, right? 23%. Let's see. Okay, so that's your 23%. Then, for then what you do, because you have to do it now, you take the 0.23, which is 23%, you multiply it by 800k, and that will get you a healthy um, 184kva. Thank you. So that's my demanded my demanded rate, demanded rate, or demand rate, after you derate it, right? That's the most important flow that you're gonna use. Here's my question for Terry, my friend. Look how we went from 800 kVA into down to what, 184. Can you, can you guys see that? It's unreal. If you wanna size for 800 kVA, can you imagine what size of a panel you're gonna come up with? So imagine we went from 100 amp into 23 amps, almost, percentage-wise. Okay, so the rest is history. Then because we don't size panels based on KVA, we size it based on what? Amps. So I need to go find the amps. So here's my I equal, what's the amps equal? One, eight, four, don't fill, forget the K, divided by two, four, zero. Why two, four, zero? Because my voltage system is what? 240, right? 240. And when you equal, when you do the math on this, anybody did the math? 767. 767 amps. 767 amps. Now we, now we know what size of a panel we can have. Any question, guys, about this? Any question? Now you can go and size the feeder and the service for this panel. Okay, I'm gonna go next. Okay, we got this. this one okay so then when uh, since we know that we have seven seven hundred and sixty seven amps to start to size the panel where do I go again D twelve and three dash twelve three dash thirteen this time three dash thirteen because if you go higher than six hundred amps it flip you to the switchboard design anybody 800. 800. So I have an 800 amp switchboard or panel board. 800. Like uh, when Todd was here, guys, he said they make panel board up to 1200 amps. After that, they switch. They move it to switch gears. What's a panel board? You can throw that sucker against the wall. What's a switchboard or a switch gear? That one is standalone. You can put it right where Jeff is sitting, right in the middle of the. Of, of the building, if you uh, the room, or you can throw it against the board, the, the wall, standalone, it has own, its own structure. You don't have to mount it against the wall. So that will be a panel board, 800 amp. Same, same token, you take your 767 amp, take this one, put over, everybody knows what O2PD by now, over temperature device, 24.6. Uh, and I think we have 700, or we, we have to jump. No, we, we, we're going to go to the next standard. What's the next standard? 800M. 800M. 
Any comments, any questions? See how it repeats itself, this, the way we do here? Now we need to find the service conductors. 800 amps, I don't know about you guys, but 800 amps is, is a lot to carry with one conductor. Anybody knows what the cutoff is? Remember what I told you the cutoff? When you start, you have to parallel 400. 400, it makes a lot of sense to parallel after you go higher than 400. Are we more than 400? Yep, parallel. Okay, so how many sets? How many sets? Now, when you want to think how many sets, think how many 400s can I get out of the 800? Always think of this. So two, right? Can I parallel three? Yeah, you can if you want to. The more you parallel, the more expensive the job is going to be and the more likelihood that you can overload one set. So take the 800 divided by two. Your goal, Jeff, is always when you parallel to get close to a 400 amp. So 400. And from there, did I do it this way? From there, you're going to go to 310.15 B16, 75 degree column, table. And from here, my friends, you're going to get yourself a healthy, a healthy um, two sets. This is how we're going to write it. Two sets of, of, now remember, it's a single phase. It's a single phase. So how many conductor? Three conductors, but but before we do the three conductors, I want you guys to look at uh, are we more than 200 amps? Does it make sense? Remember what I told you, neutral derating the neutral. Does it make sense to derate if you go higher than 225 amp? Always up to 225 amp, 250 panels, guys, okay for neutral. Higher than that, always derate the neutral. You don't need to full neutral. By that time, the, the, the load will balance itself. Okay, so that's why I'm gonna ha have, I'm gonna say two, I'm only interested in the hot now. Two sets of number 600, 600 KCM PHSW. And I'm sure Jeff is saying, Chad, I have seen switchboards for 800 amp and they have two sets of 500. They have two sets of 500, absolutely. Because if you can remember, up to 800 amp, the code allows you to go, the conductors can be slightly amp-wise, less than the overcomputation device. So if you take two sets of 500, each one, each set will give you three, 380. 380 times 380, 760. What's the next overcomputation device? 800. So could I have gone with with two sets of 500 here, yes, a lot of contractors do. Now we're engineers, we don't pay for the, for the copper or the aluminum. We size based on our computation device, period. Cool? But I want you to be aware, there in my friend, when you go and you, you see them, they didn't do anything wrong. Up to 800 amp, your conductors can be slightly less amp than your over computation device. Higher than, six, higher than 800 amp, you've got to match or go mm -hmm. higher. The conductor and basically must match the overcomputation device or more if you go over 800 amp. Okay, any question about this, guys? Why didn't I put a full neutral here? You will be a fool to pull a full neutral. It's a lot of money to pull full neutral at this amp. Let's go direct the neutral. That's why the next thing we're going to go direct the neutral. So this is the service hearts, the two hearts. Cool? Okay. The two hearts. Then, then you go to the neutral. It's even just look like an and neutral. 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 What I do for the neutral guys, I go based on. You can go directly based on the code on the load. You go directly based on the load, right, that you have. So what's my load? My load is 763 amps, right? So the code says there's the rating factor, I don't know if you guys remember, 220.61B2. 
if you go to 220.61 B2, it tells you anything higher than 600, anything higher than 200 amp, you can cut it by 70%. You guys remember that rule? On the neutral, any amp higher than 200 amp, you can cut it, you can cut it by, um, by uh, 70%. Okay, so let's apply this rule. Let's see where we are when we apply this rule. So the first 200 amp, what do you do with them? Don't mess with them. If you, when you take, then subtract 200 amp. And that's a full load amp. Did anybody put three here? 767, thank you. 767, yeah, absolutely. So then 767 here. 767. Subtract it from a 20 and multiply it by what's the derivative factor based on this rule? 0. 0.7. 0. 0.7. And then what do you do? Add it. Anybody? Five ninety seven. Ninety seven amps. Thank you. Five ninety seven amps. Any question is about this? Five ninety seven amps. Now could I have used the eight hundred amp here? Size based on eight hundred amp. Yep. Well we size it based on the loads right away. Okay, so moving on, then I am faced with 597 amps. I need, do I have, do I have a choice? Can I parallel or not parallel here? Do I have a choice? Now remember what we did with the phase, with the hot. We already parallel. If you parallel the hot, what do you need to do the neutral? You have to parallel them. So you really have no choice. I parallel the hot stool, then I have, I have to parallel the neutral with what? Two. So when you parallel them with two, you end up with two, nine, and another nine, if I did my math right. Cool, 299. Then the last step, my friends, is you take your 299 amps, take them to table. Re 10.15 B and 16 under 75 degree power. Um, any suggestion? I'm gonna write this here. I'm going to say two sets of, remember there are two sets of number one conductor, so it's a neutral, A, W, G, T, H, H, W. What size? 350. V, 5, 0, K, C, M. K, C, and M. Yes, Any question, guys? So we end up with uh, two conductor 600 and one conductor 350, two sets, two sets. Any comments, any questions, guys? Does it make sense? No? I hope it start, you start getting the rhythm of it. How that system worked from a commercial building into welders, now into a mobile homes. We're going to get into industrial buildings, all the same. A panel, a feeder, or a service, an over temperature device, a neutral, if it's higher than 225 or 220, it's higher, anything higher than 200, probably you can um, cut it. Main bonding jumper. Okay, can I move to the next? Yes, no? Okay. Grounding electrode conductor. For grounding electrode conductor, when you parallel, Andrew, my friend, when you parallel, first of all, we have 600 KC and M multiplied by. If you parallel, then you have to multiply by the number of sets that you parallel in every phase or in every hot. Well, how many sets did we parallel? Two. So that will give me 1200 KC and M. Right, that's step number one. If you parallel, 
you know you pay it on the phases. Six hundred was the phase, no? Yeah, the neutral was three fifty. Yeah, based on the phases or the hots. Not a neutral. Good point. The phases. Okay, then you take this misses at twelve hundred k c and m. You take this one to table two fifty dot sixty six. And I believe you need to take one V R A W G T H H W. Let's just say T H H W. Or you can have this one also bear. <coughs> or bear. Have one? What do you mean two? Two? Yeah, you can. You can run five fiat if you want to. Should you? No. Can you? Yes. You can, you know, can I run, if, if I need a conductor of 14, can I put number 10? Yes. Good luck uh, in the other end, they might not be able to land it. The code doesn't care. But, yeah, you got to be careful. If you go too big on the conductors, you, can, you can't land it on the logs. Because what, when they have a log, that you need to land. They have a rating, the lowest and the highest conductor that you can land on this log. If you exceed that, typically they are generous in giving you a really big range. But if you exceed it, you can't land it. For example, number four cannot land on the receptacle log, even if you want to. The creative people like Darren, what do they do? Because it's stranded. They chop a couple of strands out of it, and they leave one, and they just stick it in there. Oops. Anybody have done that? When the log does not match the cable and you're trying to force that sucker under that little log? Give it a haircut. Just give it a haircut. Is that what you call it? Haircut. haircut. Now that's not good though. You haircut, you haircut it. You basically, here's a conductor that four out. Now you made it one out. Yeah, thank you. You stuck it under the log, but it becomes one out because you gave you a haircut. I like the haircut. Is that what you use? The term they use? Haircut. Give it a haircut. Give it a haircut. Oh, my gosh, Trim it. I like that. I like the haircuts. I like the term. Okay, so any question guys about this? <laughs> Let's go to the main main bonding jumper. For the main bonding jumper, uh, whom am I gonna pick on uh, Adam? You're going to go to 250.28 first and 250.66. If you go to 250.28, it tells you if you exceeded the 1100 KCM copper, you need to do 12.5%. That's basically in, in 250.28. So we we'll do the same thing. I have 2 multiplied by 600 KCM. You end up with 1200 KCM, right? Now this is where I'm going to do my check. Is 1200 kcm more than 1100 kcm? Is it? Yes. If your answer is yes, then you're going to go to step number three. If your answer is no, you're going to go to the table, 250.66, right? My answer is yes, right? Is it? Yes. Then what do you do? You're going to go to the last step which is a 12.5% multiplied by 12.5% multiplied by 1200 kcm. Everybody knows how to make 12.5% as a decimal, right? And that will get you 150 kcm. 150 kcm. Two fifty dot twenty eight. Two fifty dot twenty eight. That's where where this number is coming from. Everybody knows where twelve and a half percent came from. And you only use the twelve and a half percent if the answer to that second statement here is yes. If it's not, if it's not, you go directly like we did here. You go directly to two fifty dot sixty six. Cool. Mistake number one that people do here, they don't multiply by the number of runs that you're parallel, so you get screwed up. 
Mistake number two, they don't apply that 12.5% if they are more than 1,100 kcal. So you have to sign that for a particular size, or do you just do it at a 150 kcal, you have three options. Because 150 kcal is not uh, a standard. Option number one, go to the bar drinking and, and get upset and drink it out, basically. Option number two, is this a good option for somebody? So be mad at the world because they don't make 150 KCM. Option number two, custom design yourself. You, 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 you sell one of your arms and one of somebody's leg and you get your 150 KCM. They custom design a wire for you. Believe me, manufacturers are notoriously famous doing that. Option number three is what you're gonna do next, which is mostly all of them. So you're gonna take the 150 KCM you're going to take this one, guys, into table chapter number nine, table number eight. You guys remember that table in that chapter? We've been in it. And, yep, you're going to go to table eight and find the next higher, not the next lower. The next higher. The next higher is 2 out or 3 out? Are you sure? 150. 3 out. I have 3 out. Maybe I made a mistake. So when you go there, you're going to add one conductor, 3 at A W G T H H W or or uh, uh, there. Cool? Oh, I'm, why am I doing it? Oh, I have the table right there. See, that's dumb. I already have the table. I thought I did it. Okay. So if my table right here is 150 kcm, go to there, that will get you one conductor, 3 at A, W, and G, T, H, H, W, or there. Huh? Yeah. Up to four odds, it's AWG. Higher than four odds, it becomes KCM. That's all right. If you say KCM, then you have to go find what the KCM for three odds, which is not commonly understandable. Any question, guys, for this? <clears throat> okay, so let's go right. Uh, so we have, uh, I have my, here's my, here's how we pedal them. Everybody can see when we pedal. I have two sets of conduits, cool. And I have my, uh, I have one conductor here as number uh, 350 KCM THHW. And also I have two conductors number 600 KCM THHW. No neutral, where, where's the ground? No ground, this is just for the surface. When you bring the surface, there is only hots and neutrals. There is no ground. The equivalent ground conductor 3 hot does not get into that conduit in any way, shape, or form. That's standalone wire that's going to the ground rod or to the steel of the building or board. Cool? So what they do guys at this end, which color I have, they tie these two hots together, that's what paralleling yeah. And at this end they tie these two together. And also they tie the neutral together. Can you guys see that? And the same thing at this end. That's what these will be tied together. And these will be tied together. And I'm, I'm intentionally trying to be boring here and do the graphic because I want it to stick in your mind what pedaling is. That's how we do it. They're tied. Can you guys see it? They're two co different conduits, but they're tied together at the end. How, they don't tie them. They, they land them under a two-log terminal. A log that has one terminal, two terminal. They take one, pair, one hot one from here, hot one from here, tie them under a two-log terminal. Does that make sense, what paralleling means? Here's the mistake number one, Jamie, that, uh, that people get confused. Is the neutral and the phase, are the neutral and the phase parallel? Look, the, the neutral conductor 
and the hot conductor are they parallel? The neutral conductor and the hot conductor are they parallel? No. You know what you paralleling a neutral conductor and hot conductor meaning you take the neutral from one end tie it to the hot. That's a dead short. And you go from the other end, the, the, the neutral, tie again to the other end of the hot. Is this what we're doing? No. You only parallel hot one, all the conductors of hot one with hot together, all the conductors of hot two together, and all the conductors of the neutral together. You can't believe how many people get confused. If you guys get this one and we move it to the commercial, it will be very industrial, it will be very easy for you. Any question guys about this? Any question? Conduit size. Conduit size. Let's go size the conduit with the, the calculator that uh, carries calculator is not working. So let's do a calculator size on that. That's a good exercise for that. Um, grab your calc and let's see if we can come up with the same size here. Okay. Would it you nine? Because you, you know you you have I almost default you your default guys almost a, a PVC schedule eighty. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and um, and try. Um, I'm gonna put my calculator in three phase. You really don't have to do that. So I have three phase seventy five CU copper. Everybody's okay with that? Uh, this is single phase. You're right. So let's go set. You're right. They set single phase. I set it at single phase seventy five copper. Cool. It really doesn't matter. We're not sizing amps here. Okay, so let's go do the following first. Let's go to the phase conductors. How many? Let's uh, the phase con the hot conductors are six hundred six zero zero. Everybody's with me? Six zero zero. And then do you see where it says K here? Hit K. Now this is six hundred six zero zero K is six hundred kcm, and then hit wire. So that you get yourself 600 kcm copper. Cool. Thumbs up, Chad. Okay. Next is the number of conductors. How many of these 600 do I have? Two. Then you're gonna hit the two. When you're done with the two, what type of insulation? <laughs> what type of insulation? I'm gonna use this insulation. THW slash THHN. So hit the insulation once. Hit the insulation twice. That's the key. Hit the insulation once. Hit the insulation twice. Everybody did that? Get the answer here? Okay, don't hit any other buttons. You got that? Hold your horses. Now let's go, let's go push the second conductor. What's the second conductor? But make sure you hit it twice. Okay, let's say what's the second conductor again? 350. So I have three, five, zero. Is it K? Yep, hit the K. Here's a K. A wire size. So three, five, zero, K, kilo. And then everybody did that. We put kilo and then hit wire size. Now you have told the calculator that you need 350 kcm copper. How many of them though? How many? One. So I'm gonna go hit the baby one. And then what type of insulation? THHW and hit that again twice. Okay. That's a cross section area for it. Now when you're done with this, go to the conduit. Let's hit the conduit. Here's my conduit. It's a three inch EMT, but I don't want the EMT. So what do you need to do? Set and change. Set and change. Keep set and change. Set and change until you get, uh, there's another way, a better way of doing it, but uh, okay, where are we here? Uh, which one? So keep setting and change. We're gonna go to PVC schedule 80. Here's rigid. No, rigid, I don't like it. Okay, so keep going all the way until you hit PVC schedule 80. Everybody can see it? Did you guys get three? Three inch. I don't know why I got three and a half here. I got three and a half. I got three and a half. You got three and a half? I got three. Yeah. Everybody got three. Somebody got three. Somebody got three and a half. Yeah. I have. I have three and a half. It should be three and a half. You. You guys got three and a half. Everybody got. Got three. Okay. <laughs> we we were two conductor six hundred kcm. Huh. I wonder. 
I have three and a half on my sheet too. So I'm going to put three and a half and we'll check on that one. So that conduit is going to be at 3.5 inches. Anybody volunteer to do it by hand for us? Three and a half. We'll check on that one. Okay. So next five minutes, and I'm going to give you guys a recreational vehicle. Should we have five minutes? Thank you. Uh, could you please do me a favor? Change the conduit into three inches after we verify the three inch and the calculator is right. Okay, recreational vehicles. Recreational vehicles. You guys want to have a recreational vehicle? Okay, no. <laughs> RVs. RVs. Recreational vehicle park. Now remember, we are not designing the vehicle itself, thanks God. That's none of our business. Uh, it's a, an automobile industry. Recreational vehicle parks, they pull in. They, they can, here's the option for these. The rich people like Joe, who work for the big companies, they pull and they plug 50 amp. Look at that, plug. Uh, how much air conditioning, everything. So they pull with 50 amp. Then, let's keep going here. Then the lower richest people like uh, who Adam, they pull and they plug with 30 or 20 amp. <laughs> with, 30, with 30 or 20 amp, cool. And then the third richest uh, Zach, they pull with the 20 amps only. So you see the amps going down? And then when it reaches your friend whom I'm going to pick, Brian, he is nothing. He pulls in a tent. Tent. He goes in a tent. Not even RV. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. I have to pick on one. Can you so please leave him my car? Tent. Even just a tent. Not even an RV. I have to pick on one, Brian. It's you today. Okay, 55.73A. Can you guys go to 55.73A? Just let me show you. Um, so we know what we know how how that goes, huh? Let me see. It was going the, your way. What did they say? Five five. Okay, here you go. Where am I, Chad? There you go. Um, five fifty five fifty one. Okay, recreation of vehicle. And what's the other one? Five five. Help me here. What did they say? Five five. I have it here. Five five. Okay. Seventy three. Five five seventy three. A. Okay, let's go to this. Okay, come on. Seventy three. Are you guys there? Five five seventy three. Here you go, right here. So here's where uh, where you guys are. This is where this info is. If you don't believe your friend Chad, and I know you guys believe me anyway, I want you to highlight this and highlight the demand factor. These two are going to be using them. So, um, this is where the loads. I want you guys to highlight. If you have electrical service and feeder, shall be calculated based on ninety six. 9.6 kVA per site if it's equipped with 50 amps, right? And then 28120, the voltage 28120, or 12240, it doesn't matter what the voltage is, uh, supply facility, and this voltage, which is 3.6 per site, if it's equipped with 30, 30 or, uh, or 20, uh, supply and this amount, if it's equipped uh, per site, if it's equipped with 20 only, can you guys see that? And this amount, if it's equipped with uh, only 20 uh, supply facility that dedicated to a tent. That's Brian. Okay, so these are where these numbers are coming from. Everybody can see that? All these numbers are coming from? Okay, so these are all the, I hope when you guys read it, it makes a lot of sense here when you write it. Okay, I want thumbs up, we know where the numbers came from. Number two, 
Then when you add all the amps, you derate them. There's a derating factor based on how many receptacles do you have. Suppose that we have 50 receptacles. Um, here's my 50. Where's 50, Chad? 50 is going to be right here. I derate the amps by what? 41. Suppose I have only four receptacles. Uh, here's my four, Chad. What's my derating factor? This number. Everybody knows that derating factor table? Can you guys highlight this? Make sure you know where this table is before we go um, and get a snapshot of that boy. Okay, so that's um, that's basically it. Okay, so now now that you guys have uh, have known where these came from, let's go write them down in order. Okay, 50 receptacles. Where's my 50 receptacles? I have, um, where am I here? Uh, okay, here we go. That's what I thought. I have 50 receptacles. I'm going to use which color, Chad? Let's use black this time. So for 50 receptacles, I have, um, each one of them is going to be 96. Everybody, okay. 96, right? Uh, volt amp. Let me just go here and, okay. 96 volt and 96 zero zero. You're going to multiply this one by what? By 25. Anybody knows why 25? And this is going to equal um, 240kva. Any question about where that 96 came to be? Where the 96 came to be? Anybody? Everybody understand where the 9600 came to be because of that article? That's, where is it here or here? Here? 96. That's the 96 right here for the 50, right? Okay, so let's go back. For 3020 receptacles, it's 3600. 3600 multiplied by how many of them do I have? These are the number of receptacles, 15. And if you do the math, that will get you 541K. V and A. Okay, KVA. Okay. Why is it two four in the top? In KBA? The second one is wrong. You're up to what? The second one is, I just read it right, it's five, 54. 54 K, E, and A. I saw the key as a one. Thank you. The second one is 54 K, B, A. That's why I want you guys to verify it with me. Okay, so then who was that? Adam, that's you, right? Now, where are we with Zach? Now, Zach, 20 amp receptacle only. The third cheapest. And how many of them do I have based on that rule? 2400 zero, zero, multiplied by 10 and convert it to KVA that will give me 24. 24 K, V, and A. Any question, guys, where are these coming? The numbers? Everybody knows where the numbers are? Let's flash them one more time. Here's my 24. 24 for the 20 only. Cool. Last but not least, my friend Brian with his 10s, 600. Multiplied by five of them, that will get you uh, 3K. Okay? Any comments about this one, guys? Any comments, any questions? So that's the... Everybody understands where these came to be, from what size of RV you can pull in. The higher the amps, the more juice this RV is going to pull. And if all hell break loose, you can have a tent. Size for the tent. <laughs> well, that's another. <laughs> You're up to right. I'm going to add them up. Now go ahead and add all these up. Can you guys come up with 321? 321 K, V, and A. Did you guys come up with something similar to that? 321 K, V, A. Okay, I also want you to add the number of receptacles. 
all the receptacle, regardless of the amps, all the receptacle, regardless of the amps. How many receptacles, regardless of the, uh, the amps? Five, five sites. These are the number of sites, the number of receptacles for each site. By the way, everybody knows that a receptacle is a site. That's where the RV is going to pull into a site, plug into a receptacle, right? So when we add all these receptacles, um, they are sites. So they can pull in, including the tent, there's going to be 55 sites. Cool? All right, so let's go to 55 and find the rating factor. Since you guys are my friends, um, what was it? 55? What's the rating factor for 55? 41. You got it. So 41, oops, don't go too fast, Chad. Okay, so I'm going to go here. So here's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do this one right in this area here. So I'm going to take my, what did you say, 0.41? Now demand, demand load. My demand load is 0.41 multiplied by 3, 2, 1, K equal, what does it equal? 132, 132, K, Z, and A. That's your demand load. Did we do the math right, anybody? The same answer. If you multiply each one of them, <laughs> yeah, you do it as total. Because you don't demand it based on 10. No, you demand them, yep, you add them up and you demand it based on how many of them. Yep, total. <laughs> you go to 55 receptacles regardless of the rich, the poor, and the poor, uh, and in between, and you demand them. What is it, 110 for two RVs? I see your point. These are bare minimum. If you want to go adjust it to go higher than that, that's fine too. Okay, any questions guys about this? Any questions? 132? That's it. So if you have an RV issues, you're going to calculate the load based on this. So now, can I move to the next one? Now that we know the load, now that we know my load, then I'm going to come over here and find the I. I equal 132 K, B, and A. Divide this by, I will use 208 single phase. I'm using 208 single phase. My system here is 120, 208 single phase. Everybody see that? Not three phase. 120, 208 single phase. 120, 208 single phase. 120, 208 single phase. Everybody's cool with this? Anybody's anti that? 551. Shall be for single phase. It goes single phase 120 normal for the okay. Okay, okay. okay. here. These are all single phase systems. And well, two eight one twenty supply facilities. Okay, so these are all the calculation for single phase. Um, so what, what would that get you? Anybody? 635 amps. <laughs> then you will find the 635 amps. Where do we go to find it? The wall 3-13. What do you get? 800 amps. Does that sound familiar to you guys? How about over construction device? Six, three, five. Go down to here. Two, four, zero, dot six. That's seven hundred amps. Okay, so we have a six hundred and a uh, uh, seven hundred and eight hundred amp panel, seven hundred amp over computer device, right? Does is this okay? Yeah. No problem. 
Would it be a good idea to put an 800 amp and pull? Yep. Yeah. Some people say if the panel is 800, let's pull an 800 color D. It's good if you're paying for it. Okay, everybody got these two, right? All right, let's go to the service entrance conductor. Service entrance conductor, guys, we're going to pair off. 700 divided by 2. That will get me the first thing. Uh, I'm going to get 350 amp, right? Take this one to a table, 310.15, D16, under 75 degree column. You're going to get two sets, two sets of two conductors because I'm only caring about the hots. Each one of them is 500 KCM PHHW. What happens to the neutral? We're going to derate the neutral in a second. Any question about the phases? See how easy? Piece of cake. Now let's do the neutral. The neutral, I go by load. Here's my neutral. What's my load? 6 V5 amp. Take this one. The first 200 amp, what do you do with them? Don't mess with them. The leftover, 6 V5 minus 200. Multiply this one by what? 0.7. And what do you do with them? Add them up. So that will give me 505 amp. 505 amp. Any question guys about that? Why did you use 700 amps uh, for the turbine entrance conductors and 635 for the main pump? Good point. Uh, if the conductors are landing on the fuse, typically you size based on the fuse or a circuit breaker. But the neutral is not landing in the fuse, right? That's the justification. It's not landing on the circuit breaker, is it? We don't land the neutral in circuit breaker. 99.9% .9 of the time we don't. Okay, so, so then, since I-505, oops, 505 divided by 2, why do you think I divided by 2? 253 amps, do I have a choice here, if the phases were 2, no, you don't have choice, and then you take your 250 3 amps, take these to table, 310.15, D and 16, 75 degree column, and that will get you the following. Two sets, oh, what's, what's that? This is, this is what we call it, spike. You know what spikes is? Transient. All right, so let's say two sets of uh, one conductor, and what was that conductor? You guys came up with 250, KCM, P, H, H, and W. Two sets of one conductor, 250, KCM, P, H, and W. The last thing I did here, guys, uh, we sized the conduit. I'm going to do the conduit twice in between here. So I have two sets of two conductor number 500 kcm and one conductor number 250 kcm. And I need to size the conduit, P, B, C, Schedule A. Okay, shall we go do it with a calculator since you guys are calculator savvy now? Okay, so let's go to the calculator. Oops. Uh, where's my calculator? Did somebody steal my calculator? Okay, here's my calculator. So I'm going to go, shall we first of all erase everything that you have done? And let's go to... The first thing I'm going to do the 500, 500 zero, zero, K and wire, right? 500 KCM. How many of them do I have? Two. 
here's my two, and here's hit the insulation, hit the insulation again. That's a cross-sectional area of that two together, the two 500s. Next, we're going to go to 250, 250. Don't add plus or I do anything. 250, it's a kilo and a wire, right? So that's the second set, the 250. How many of the 250 do I have? One. And then what type of insulation? THHM. Hit again. That's a cross-sectional area of that conductor. Now we need the conduit. Hit the conduit. Three inch. What did I come up last time? I came up with a three inch. Everybody came up with three inch? If Aaron came up with three inch, a three inch it is. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense, guys? We're going to start using the calculator because you guys paid $63 for Pete's sake. Even when Santa's not here yet. You know. All right, so let's go. Everybody got where we come up with the three. So uh, my conduit is going to be what? Three inch. Three inch. One. How many of them? One. So I have one three inch PVC schedule 80 conduit. Does that make sense, Kerry? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, two. We're paralleling, Chad. So we're, remember, we're paralleling. So how many conduits? Two. Let they uh, remember that we're paralleling. We have two conduits. Why two conduits? Because we're parallel, right? Parallel two sets. No. Ah, ah. If you're gonna write it, you would say two sets of, and then one conduit, three inch PVC schedule, eighty two conductors, blah blah blah. If you put two sets at the top, it applies to everything underneath it. So two sets of one conduit three inch PVC schedule eighty. So, and yeah, two sets of the whole thing. Okay, can I go to the next? Okay, let's go to this is easy. A grounding in a third conductor. Now I remember I parallel two sets. So here's my five hundred kcm. Uh, multiply this by two. Anybody can tell me why I did two. A hundred, a thousand kcm, right? And then you take the thousand kcm, you take it to table two five zero dot sixty six, and that will get you a healthy one conductor two R A W G T H H W or bare. Anybody disagree with that? That's a piece of cake, huh? Let's go to the main bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper, guys, is a piece of cake. The same thing. You take the two, multiply it by 500 kcm, that will get you 1,000 kcm. Now I skip the check. What do you do here? Now you check. Can we do the check as long as we're on it? So let's do the check. The check is is 0, 0, 0 kcm more than 1100 KCM. What's the answer for this question? That would be a question for fourth grader, right? No. <laughs> okay, so if it's no, then what do you do? You just go directly to the table. Then, and I like to spell it here because hopefully we'll, because you guys are going to forget it. If it's spelled, hopefully it's stick in your mind. Um, took me a while to stick in my mind, believe me. So then you take the 100 KCM and take it to table 250.66. And what do you get? Same like you got up there. One conductor, number 2 R A W and G T H H W or bear. Or cover bar. We see that check though. You have to use the check with the main body jump. Last example. <laughs> when you guys are done, the last example, I have three of them. We did mobile and manufactured homes part. We did RV part. Um, the last thing we're going to do, my friends, is the marina. 
Now this is for the richest among us who have boards and they're going to pull their boards. Is that Aram? No. No, Aram, Joe, still Joe. Joe, we got you, we gave you 50 M, uh, 208, 120 man uh, RV plug. So. Okay, so then they have no money. Now let's put Jeff on that one with the, with the boat. Okay, any question guys before I move into the marinas? That's where you plug your uh, 150 foot boats. Is there 150? Okay. <laughs> 55 let's go to 55 demand factors it's for each service a feeder calculated based on Architecture and in according, okay, shall be permitted for each service calculation. These, <coughs> okay, <coughs> if you guys go to this site on 250, this will be uh, where am I here? Uh, 55.12, table 555.12, demand factor. The way they do these, these are outlets, right? You plug an outlet, a marine equipment in an outlet, and you feed your boat, right? The way they do them, guys, they add all the amps. Can I get you guys for a second? They add all the amps, and then you, they apply a demand factor. Here's the demand factor. If I have 5 to 8, what's my demand factor? 90. If I have uh, 4, what is that? 41 to 50, my demand factor is 1. Can't even read that one. 50? 50. That's it straight here. So if it's uh, if it's 41 to 50, my demand factor is 50. Everybody knows how to use this table. Can we go there and look at it, guys? Make sure you highlight it before we start. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna add the amps. I wanna remind you. We'll get back to this table. We'll, we'll flip on it. Uh, let me go back to you to tell you. Okay. Here's our situation. We have a marina, a boat yard, Omer Marina, boat yards. And for my marinas or boat yards, I have the following. I have, I need a panel to feed all these pedestals. Pedestals, they have outlets they're going to plug into to feed your boats and marine equipment. Um, here's what I, we're designing it for the following site. I have 21 pedestals with an outlet of 50 amp two poles. Everybody's okay with this? Those are for Joe, people like Joe, the rich people. 50 amp, the higher the amp, the richer the person is. So Joe's gonna go 50 amp two poles, 21 of them. Then we go down to the poor people. Whom would we say the poor again? Andrew, let's pick on Andrew today. Then Andrew, 30 amp two pole, his boat smaller, He's going to plug it into a 30 amp two pole, and we have 19 for the people like Andrew. Then we keep going to cheaper and cheaper. So, who am I going to pick on now? Carrie. Carrie, my friend, 20 amp two pole, smaller boat. Uh, we have 10 of them. We don't care about the poor people, we don't want them there. And then, uh, okay, who am I? Aaron. Now we're going to pick on Aaron. Did we pick on you, Aaron? Uh, okay, Aaron, my friend, the poor of the poor. Oops, did I say that? We're gonna give you. Here's what we're giving Aaron. Can you guys see that? 20 amp, but single phase, single pole. That's what we give the kitchen. Right? That's what we give the kitchen. So 15 of of the the poor people with with 20 amps. Everybody understand what the system is? Everybody understand what the system is? <laughs> and these are plugged in. The number. <laughs> So my job, uh, there and my friend, is to size the panel, size the service, overcome friction device, and disconnect, and the service conductors, 
size the conduit, uh, the conduit we will be assigned the beam bonded jumper and the grounding electrode conductor. Same thing that we have been doing. Does it make sense? Okay. All right, so everybody knows what this picture is, right? Everybody knows what this picture is. Cool. That's the most important thing. Um, before, I, I, like to, I like to add a couple of things here to your picture, guys. So if you have a 20 amp single pole circuit breakers, what do you think that cable going to a 20 amp receptacle would be sized? It's a single pole. How many conductors? With a ground. Single pole, two conductors and a ground. So I'm going to put three conductors, number. Typically, unless it's too long, it will be number what? 20 amps goes with what? There is a receptacle. Number 12, number 12, number 12, AWG. These are just sizing for the amps, just sizing for the amps, piece of cake. Let's go back to here. Two, 20 amp, two pole. 20 amp, two pole, those are 240. We're giving them a 240 system, okay? 240, so we're gonna go three conductors, two hot and a ground. Same thing, number 12, AWG. And the installation would be what? T H H W T H S W. So let's go to the richest people here. Two poles, so three conductors. Anybody knows why the 30 amp needs three conductors? Two hot and a neutral, right? Unless you have, uh, I'm sorry, two hot and, and uh, two hot and a uh, uh, ground. Unless you have 120, then you have four. So let's assume just we're assuming here three conductors. So that would be number one. Number 10, AWG. Everybody's following. I'm just signing for the amps here. T H H W. Let's go to 50. What would the number, number 50 be? Now, these are receptacles. You're going to size it based on 60, 60 degree column. Three conductors, at least three conductors, probably four. Uh, number what? Number eight. I have number eight. Everybody's okay with that? Number eight, A W G T H S W. So I'm sizing, I'm sizing the brand circuits, guys. Very easy, based on the full load current of based on the, the circuit breakers. Now that 50 most likely would have a neutral with it, so it might be four conductors. Why three conductors on a single pole? Why three conductors in a single pole? Because one for the hot, one for the neutral, and one for the ground. Why in the two pole? One for the hot, one for the hot, two hots, and one for the ground. Yeah? If you have two pole, you need two hots, but you still need a ground. If you have single pole, you have you need the hot and a neutral, right? And you still need a ground. Make sense? Good point though. Okay, so this is not what the exercise is. This is just bonus. How to size these. Okay, let's go to the exercise. Um, so we know where we are. <clears throat> okay, let's go with, so here's my exercise. Um, I have 50 amp, 250 volt, 30 amp, 250, 20 amp, 250, and 20 amp, 120. Receptacles, these are all my receptacles, cool? I have the number of receptacles, 21 of each, 21, 19, 10, 15. Can you see the amps and the voltage for each one of these receptacles? Okay. So look how they do them. They do them completely different. Did you guys do that one, Darren, at your school? Did you do any calculation like this? You ever done that? Okay. Now they do them differently here. They do them differently. Let me clean that a little bit. They do them differently, as you can see. Over the years, it gets some. So I'm going to take my. There you go. There you go, come on, and move it, Chad, and move it again. Then I'm going to grab my calculation here. It's, right, it's really nice to do a schedule because it makes it, it, makes, it uh, makes it easier. Okay, do I have another line here? I have another line, but it didn't do much with it. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Um, so here's how we do it. Now, I want I want you guys to pay attention now. See what they they, they divided them between the two hots. Remember, my system is two forty one twenty. My system 
is 240-120. So this voltage here is 240-120 volts. That's single phase, of course, single phase. Cool? Now going back, so if you have a 50 amp 240, do you think the 50 amp will be seen by the two phase at the hot? If it's 240, it's too cold. So that 50 amp will be under the, fifth, the hot one and under hot two. So you're going to put 50 under hot one and 50 under hot two. Why? Because it's 240. It will be sucking 50 amps from hot one and sucking 50 amps from hot two. Okay, 30 amps, same thing, 240. Where do you guys think that? That's going to be uh, taking that much that stuff. Uh, and then, so that's the first thing. Then how many of them do I have? You're going to multiply this by how many? 21. And you're going to multiply this one by how many? 21. Why 21? Because I have 21 of them. Make sense? They will be seen under each hot because they're sucking, each one of them sucking 50 from each hot. And it will be multiplied by 21 because there's 21 of them. Okay, let's go to the second one. Uh, 19 multiplied by I, the same thing, 240, so that would be 30 amps. Um, and the same thing, I'm going to use the uh, uh, same convention, 30 amps times uh, 19. Let's just be standardized here a little bit. Go in one direction. Okay, so let me, let me make it 21, how many of them, times 50. And then 19, how many of them times 30? Amps. Amps. Any question about that? Let's go to the second one. 20 amps, 250. Same thing. 10 multiplied by, by 20 amps. 10 multiplied by 20 amps. Any question about that? Piece of cake. Now, here's where I want you to wake up, my friend. This one is 10, uh, 20 amps. 120. Ah, now if we have 120, they are going to be seen by either hot one or hot two. They'll be full to put them all in hot one. You'll be full to put them all in hot two. So what's the smartest way to do? Is to balance them between hot one and hot two. So could you please divide 15 by two and tell me what that would give you? Thank you. It has to be at which. Okay, pick one leg that you want to put the eight on. Eight, shall we put the eight on the first leg? So eight multiplied by 15 amps, and the leftover will be seven multiplied by 15 amps. Everybody knows why I didn't multiply 15. Uh, by 20 amps, wasn't it? Uh, 20 amps, I'm sorry, 20 amps. 20 amps, yep. So that will be 20 amps and times 20 amps. Just the right. Everybody knows why we don't multiply the 15 on both sides? Because these are, these are single pairs, single pole. So you can divide them as you should between the two hots. You should divide them equally if you can. But if you can't, then this, if it was 16, it will be at 8. Since it's 15, it's 8, 7. <coughs> Any question about this? So piece of cake. The reason why we're doing this, guys, is because we're going to balance them now. Okay, so are they balanced? The 240 piece of cake, they are balanced by it, so you don't do anything, we just multiply them, and we put them on the two legs. The only ones that you have to split them is the 120 ones. Cool? Can I have thumbs up, Chad, we fully understand that? Yes? Okay. So let's go add those boys. So when you add them, um, so multi add all these together, multiply and add. Um, I came up with 1960 here. One nine six zero amps on this leg, and one nine eight zero one nine eight zero on this leg. Anybody came up with something different? One nine eight zero one nine six zero. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's that's the adding the adding the the amps all together. Now adding the receptacles on each leg, all the receptacles on each leg, all the receptacles on each leg. Okay, the receptacles on this leg is how many of them? 57 receptacles. The receptacles on this leg is how many of them? 58 receptacles. Right? 
Can you guys see that? So first I added the amps, then I added the receptacles. Okay. Now, any any question about this? So I put added the receptacles in both of them. Now then, here's what you need to wake up now. You're going to pick the one that has the large the largest amp. Which leg is going to see the largest amp? That's piece of cake there. So we are looking at this for sizing. Can you guys see that? Why did I pick this? Because it has the largest watt. And, and always the one that has the largest amp always has the largest watt. Number of receptacles. That's why it has the largest amp. Right? Because it has the lar largest number of receptacles. So the only difference between them is really one 20 amp receptacle thrown on this side. So you always pick the one with the largest one. And why? Because when you size, you size based on the worst scenario. The worst scenario is the largest amps coming from one leg. Cool? The reason why they do them this way, guys, because you want to balance the loads on the two legs. Okay. Any question with the 1980 amps? Yes? If you have, I'm sorry. One one. Absolutely. You don't throw them with the other one. Yeah. All the two four you guys are balanced. All the two four yeah, up to it. This everything here. Anything that says oops, let me use a different color. These ones, these ones, and these ones are completely balanced on the two hops. So you don't have to worry about them. The only one that you need to balance, the only one that you need to balance are the 120 load. So I could have a hundred of this type here, they still be the same. A hundred times fifty, a hundred times fifty. Ninety-nine will be ninety-nine times fifty, ninety-nine times fifty. Because they're balanced, they're coming from the two hearts. Now I have fifty-five receptacles one twenty. Now I have to divide them equal. What's 55 divided by 2? 27 and a half. So that will be 28. 27 and 26. 28, 27. 28, 27. Does that make sense? We balanced them. Cool. Can I have thumbs up? We know how to do that, Chad. Okay, now let's go to size that boy. Now we know the amps. Now that we decided what the amps are, <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that we decided what the amps are, you need to go and find the demand. Now remember the table. So I have. Um, no. Now let's go. Did we find the demand for how many receptacles do we have? So how many receptacle total all together we have on one leg? Fifty-eight. Okay. What's the rating factor for fifty-eight? 50, is this it here? For 58. Point 0.4? 0.4. 58 is 0.4. Right? 58 is 0.4. Everybody can see that? Right here? All right. So let's go to multiply this one. So here. So the first thing I want to write here is, um, okay, you got that one, you got this one, get this one, Chad. So we're going to have 50 for 58 receptacles. The rating factor from table. Can anybody give me the table? 5, 5, 5, dot, uh, 1, 2. 1, 2? 12. 12. Thank you. What's the rating factor? 40%. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do. Second thing is take the 0.4, multiply it by how much amps you got. The largest amp, 1980. What do you get? You get 792 amps. That's your demand. Demand load. They call it demand load. That's your demand load. That's what you're going to size for. 792 amps. Cool. We're done. When you catch, capture that number. Now you're going to size. Now the rest is history. Right. Everybody get that? 
גם נבוא אני. אמסרי? Why do you think they do it? Highly unlikely that all the rich people and the poor people are cooking and air conditioning is running in their uh, marinas, charging the batteries at the same time. Diversity factor. Diversity factor. Yes, the highest, uh, absolutely. The largest amps and the largest receptacle for the duetic factor. Cool. Okay, then, just a quick reminder that the amp that we came up with was 1792 amps. That's what we're going to be studying for. Then, you take the 792 amps, take this one to D, wall 3 13, like we're showing up here, and then we'll get you a healthy 800 amp. What's with the 800 amp that we keep stuck in with here? Then you do the 792 amp, that will get you again 240.6, that will get you 800 amps again. So the panel and the over convection device, both of them are 800 amps. Piece of cape, huh? Seems we love that 800 amp panel. Let me know when we can go to the last uh, two or three. Okay. Yes, no. Okay. Uh, service entrance, hot and neutral. Let's do the service entrance conductor guys, hot and neutral. Okay, so for the hot, we're going to turn around 800 amp divided by two equal 400 amp, right? And from here, we did table 310.15B16 under 75 degree column. We came up with two sets of, two sets of uh, 600, right? We just did that. 600 KCM, PHHW, and how many of these two? Single two. Right? For the hots. Right? Is that what we did for the hots? Cool. Any question guys about that one for the hots? Let's do the neutral. Neutral. These are hots. Neutral. For the neutral, here's what we did. Okay. What was the size that we came up with, the actual size? How much? 792. 792. You're going to take 200 amps, and then uh, 792 minus 200 amps, and multiply it by 0.7. Anybody can do this math? I did not do this math. I need somebody. How much? 614 amps. I need a second on that. Second. Where's my A students here? Adam, they're pointing at you. 792 minus 200 times 0. 0.7 plus 2. Yeah, 614. Okay, thank you. Second. Not like I don't trust you, but I like a second. Okay. Then from here, you're going to take the 614 divided by 2. That will give me 307. Right? 307 amp. 307. Then you take the 307 amps to 310.15 B16. 75 degree column. What do you get? You get how many sets first? Two sets of one conductor number 350 KCM. This is not even close to enough. If it's close, we're going to go. KCM and THHW. Uh, cool? Any question, guys? So we found the hot and neutral. 
Didn't we size this a minute ago? What was the conduit size that we came up with there? Yeah, three inch. And as long as we are on it, I, I believe we sized it. Didn't we size something like 600 with 350? I swear we did size 600, 350 conduits. Yes, 600, We came up with three. Okay, so I'm going to size the conduit. I'm going to do the conduit here. Um, so that will be um, two conduits, three inch, T, B, C, schedule, eight, and zero. Cool? That's the conduit for it. That conduit will take care of this. And we'll take care of these two. Any question, guys? Always size a conduit. A gentleman would not move conductors without a conduit. Okay, let's do the main. Uh, where are we there? Last one. Um, GEC, grounding electrode conductor. Grounding electrode conductor. So what do we do? We take the two, multiply the two by, uh, multiply the two by uh, three six six hundred. K equals twelve hundred zero zero K C and M. Then you take the twelve zero zero K C M. Take it to two fifty dot sixty six. That will get you a healthy one conductor number. Was it what? We did this before, or three of us. Three of us. Three of A, W, G, T, H, H, W. Cool. Now the last thing, and this is busy, I'm sorry, I, <clears throat> I made it busy here. <clears throat> For well, the bonding jumper, don't forget that this is 250.28. When you go there, you do the same math. 2 times 600 kcm uh, equals 1200 kcm. Then you're going to take 12 and a half percent, multiply it, because this is more, I skipped one step here. Because it's more than 900 kcm. 200 equal 150, right? 150 m kcm. And we took this one to chapter number 9, table number 8. You guys remember that? And we came up with what size? Three of us. One conductor, we are A, W, G. Is that what we came up? Yeah. Same conductor, basically. Same like the one. Yep, one conductor, three R. Okay, here's your story I, I crammed all. And the installation going to be T, H, H, W. Or bare. Any question guys about this? I know I, I crammed everything at the end, but we've done that, right? We've done it many times. Yeah, it's deleting the, the whole the whole thing. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So now, my friends, we sized the service panel, the service overcomplication device, the service conductors, the service neutral, the hots and the neutral, and the service bonding jumper and the service um, grounding electrode conductor. Would you guys be able to ease it when we put in the test? Yes, no? Now remember, what did Chad say about cheat sheets? You're going to have yourself a cheat sheet. You have a support line too. You can call your significant other, a friend, YouTube. <laughs> As long as you don't call me. <laughs> Remember that support line? Okay, any question, guys? That's all I have for you. We're done with this load calculation. Next week, we're going to do transformer calculation for this semester anyway. And then we'll flip into the lighting business.
school. Uh, next, you know, the week will be a week after. I know it's a schedule that says next week, right? But I can't remember. Uh, you looked at the schedule. I don't, even if it says three, we're not going to be able to, to do a test next week. I can tell you. We are where we should be, guys, so we're not behind. So thank you.